So the importance of vitamin D. So the importance of vitamin D is becoming quite a topic these days. Um, it's always been kind of understood that we need enough sun, okay? And, and yet people get it. I've had people come in here who are, uh, who are lifeguards <laughs> who had vitamin D of like 10. Right? The range in the United States of America for vitamin D is 30 to 100. And the, the lifeguards had 10. And I, I mean, that's, that's one example, but I've had tons and tons of people come here. But, but I, you know, I ride my horses all the time and I'm, I'm, I'm always outside and I'm always walking around and so on and so forth. I spend my whole day outside. I'm a roofer and, and so on and those types of things. So vitamin D is now starting to be understood beyond that, beyond just, okay, I, you get out in the sun and get some vitamin D. Uh, low vitamin D can be an indicator. Uh, in my practice, it's like as soon as I see low vitamin D that far below the lab range, I'm thinking autoimmunity right away. Why? Because vitamin D works together with another antioxidant to strengthen something called your T regulatory cells. And these, and these T regulatory cells are cells that Ultimately, um, their primary focus is to stop your immune system when your immune system is killing a bacteria or a virus because you got cold. So at some point, something's got to stop it. It's like the virus is killed. Something's got to tell the immune system to stop killing it. This part of the immune system does that. But the more important part in my practice of what the T regulatory system does is once a person's developed autoimmunity, it works very hard to stop your immune system from attacking that tissue, whether it's your thyroid or whether it's tissues from lupus or Sjogren's or MS, whatever it is. High doses of vitamin D strengthen that regulatory system and, and, and make it more difficult for you to have that, uh, that attack. <coughs> I say high doses of vitamin D. There's a lot of controversy on that. Um, and, um, and so, the ranges that I like to see my patients in uh, is above 80. Um, there uh, was a recent study out from Israel not that long ago uh, on people who got COVID. Sorry, on people who did not get COVID. And I'm, I'm not I, I'm sure of all the parameters that they, that they evaluated, but of all the parameters that they evaluated from the... Um, from the immune response and immune cells and the, and, and the activities of daily living, et cetera, the only thing they came up with was that people had high levels of vitamin D. Why would vitamin D at high levels, what are considered high levels in this country, okay, at high levels have to do with, with not getting COVID? When, when you get vitamin D up into an area of like 80, 90, 100, 100, 10, 120, and a lot of doctors will say it's too high, okay? When you get up into that range, vitamin D becomes antioxidant. It becomes what it is, a sterol, a steroid, which means anti-inflammatory, and it becomes antiviral. I've seen it have good effects in people who have Hashimoto's and also have either uh, Epstein -Barr, chronic Epstein-Barr virus or cytomegalovirus or HHV6 virus. These viruses tend to get in you, hang around. You get, if you have autoimmune problem, you get, uh, you get compromised and all of a sudden you start getting all these thyroid symptoms. And, and, uh, and a lot of times, depending on the patient, just high, high doses of vitamin D, um, they will, uh, they will dampen that that inflammatory response and dampen the, the, the Hashimoto's thyroid uh, symptom. So vitamin D is, uh, is, 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 is a, again, it's also an, a steroid at that level. And it's also an antioxidant. Why do I keep saying high levels? Okay. Um, I treat people from um, the four corners of the globe, as we used to say. And so Canada, <clears throat> Our range is 30 to 100. <coughs> Excuse me. The last one that I just um, saw from Canada, their range was 50 to 200. 
200. Our high range is 100, theirs is 200. I've treated people from Southeast Asia where their ranges were 95. 95 was their low end range, 95 to 235. And I have a colleague who teaches um, functional medicine who claims that he has treated people from a country where the range was 100 to 300. I don't know if that's fact or not, but he's a pretty credible guy. So, so the, the ranges have not been established. It's interesting to me that all the other countries have higher ranges. I can conjecture why, um, why that is. I'm not going to go into that, though. Um, there, there are a lot of parameters in this country as far as, as supplements and, and you look online and pretty much every supplement I use and, and somewhere online says this hasn't been investigated or it's, you know, this is anecdotal or whatever. You know, some of the things I'm doing have been around for like 5,000 years, but, and they've worked for 5,000 years. And vitamin D is one of them. And vitamin D is, 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 so as vitamin D is important. You're seeing more and more. Uh, studies lately talking about vitamin D and helping your hormones and vitamin D and helping brain function and vitamin D with depression. And you're going to keep seeing this. Why do I know that? Because we use it in our practice and we see, see the things that are now becoming, um, are now becoming studied by vitamin D. So vitamin D is a, a very, very important part, uh, of your, of your, um, uh, of, 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 of your vitamin maintenance uh, I, um, supplement protocol, your personal protocol. I, when I'm done with my patients, I don't have my patients on a lot of supplements. Um, I might use a lot to get them there, along with diet and lifestyle changes and, and, and these types of things. But once they're done, I, there's, a, there's a, a, a handful of supplements that I recommend, especially for the autoimmune patient. Vitamin D is one of them. I will tell you, I take a handful of supplements. I have five autoimmune problems. I've had other things going on. And if I don't feel like taking my supplements that day, and there are days where I don't feel like taking my supplements, I always make sure I take my vitamin D, always. Because, I, because I've seen it to be that important in my practice relative to my patient population. So I think that's a good general summary of of the importance of vitamin D.